Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Mesh Mixer is a very, very powerful program and I've disregarded it for way too long. It is actually kind of easy to use. So in this video, I'm going to show you what you can do with Mesh Mixer and how to use it. So to start off, you can download Mesh Mixer for free from the Autodesk website and install it. Then once you installed it and opened it up, you get greeted with a welcome screen where you can do a couple different things. But to show you more of the details, I'm actually gonna jump over to the computer and sh show you with a screen recording. All right, so this is the welcome screen I was talking about. You can either import your own STL, OBJ, or a whole bunch of other different formats uh, file into here, or you can open up an already existing mesh mixer file, or you can start off with some predefined shapes. To make it a bit easier, we're just going to start off with this bunny here. It's just a simple uh, bunny sh shape and as you can see, there's a hole in the bottom. So that's one of the things that we're going to fix about this model. And I think we're also going to try to uh, replace this bunny's head with something different. So first of all, let's go to the tools here on the side. These are the different tool palettes that you can use to work with your model. By the way, the movement is super easy. You can either just use your right mouse button and to turn around and your middle mouse button to pan around, or if you're used to the fusion controls, they work in here as well. So in under analysis, you have a couple different options. Let's first use the inspector, and that's just gonna analyze the model and point out holes here in blue, for example, and then we can simply click auto repair all here and if it's simple or if there are like different colored uh, markers then you might have to do some more advanced stuff. But for simple holes like this one we can just fill it here. Now if this hole was up here somewhere we could also use smooth fill and then it would try to adapt to the curve. But down here it doesn't really make sense so we can just use flat fill since we just want a flat bottom. So I'm going to hit auto repair and as you can see there now is a bottom here. Done. And in here there are also some other tools like dimension. You can check out all the dimensions and you can also scale it. For example the height here is now 50 millimeters. Let's say we want this bunny a bit bigger so it, we can say 60 and then it automatically scales up like that. So if you slice it off it doesn't have that, that you can just use that in here. And there are also some more advanced tools like strength analysis and that's gonna point out where the weak spots are in your model. Uh, and some other ones, you can play around with this yourself. So let's go over to edit. That's where like the main interesting things are. And I don't have time to go over all of them but let's first look at transform that's just Basically, you can move your model around, you can scale it up and down, all that good stuff. And the one we're gonna uh, do first here is plane cut. And this gives you a plane here, which is then gonna be where we cut along. So I said we're gonna cut off the bunny's head. So let's move this plane roughly so that it cuts off the head. and a little bit more like that that looks about right and this blue arrow here means which half you're gonna throw away that's when you uh, choose cut here or you can just choose slice and then it's gonna keep both halves but i'm gonna use cut and i'm gonna turn this arrow around by clicking on it because we want to cut away this side and i'm gonna hit accept and now we, you can see that this bunny doesn't have a head in anymore. And to add a different head onto it, uh, we're gonna go to Mesh Mix. And in here you have a whole bunch of different models uh, that are already included. Or you can of course import your own with the import button here. Just choose append here instead of replace. And I don't really wanna do that. So here let's go to heads and what do we wanna do? Let's choose this one, that's gonna be funny. And just drag it in here and it's 
gonna not really be in the right place. So we can just use the simple transform tools again to move it roughly where we want it. And I think we're also gonna scale it up a bit. And that looks about right, like I want it. So I'm gonna hit accept here. Now to merge these two models, I'm first gonna have to prepare them a little bit so that Mesh Mixer likes it a bit better. You can just try to select both of them and click Boolean Union here, that's to combine, but let's see. And if we hit accept here, yeah, it's gonna throw out an error. It doesn't specify a lot, which is kind of a bummer, but I think I know what it, this error is. And we have one model here that doesn't even have a bottom. So let's just quickly use the inspector to auto repair it and give it a bottom. And then we have just these giant faces here that, and these tiny little faces here. And to better make them kind of one, uh, let's use another tool under edit here which is called Make Solid. This basically regenerates the mesh over it uh, in kind of a uniform size. So instead of having one big area here, it's gonna uh, divide it up into small little pieces, which is gonna make it easier to merge to. So we're gonna hit Make Solid first for the head here. Um, as you can see, it changed it around a little bit. And that's just cause it's the fast type here. If you have sharp corners and you want them to stay sharp corners, you, you can select sharp edges preserve here. That's just gonna make sure that all sharp edges stay sharp edges. But I don't really care. Uh, this is good enough for me right now. And I'm gonna hit accept. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the body here. Edit, make solid. And since I, down here, I want that this edge here stays crisp. I'm gonna use Sharp Edges Preserve, hit Update. And sometimes you have to wait a little bit uh, for the program to complete. And don't worry if you see just the gray screen, it's probably still loading, no need to worry. And here we go. That took a bit longer to calculate since it had to like make sure that all the edges are nicely preserved. Uh, but we're just gonna hit Accept now and now we have two uh, remeshed bodies and by selecting both of them here in the object browser or you can just click on both of them with shift and then we're gonna click boolean union here that's gonna calculate some stuff and now when we hit accept here it should work all right so now you can see here in the object browser it is just one object here and it still looks kind of ugly. Like you can really tell that we just put together two shapes like this. So I'm going to show you a different palette here, which is the sculpt palette. This is a really, really powerful, and you can actually sculpt your own models using this. But I'm not going to go into too much detail in here. The only tool I'm going to use in this video is the shrink smooth here. And using quite a high strength here, and this brush size looks about right. I'm gonna use this over the edge to smooth it over. And this tool is really just fantastic. If you look at it, this already just smoothed it over and made it look like it is supposed to be one. And I mean, I can't tell you how useful this tool is. It is just so powerful. You can also smooth over these areas uh, if you don't like them if they're a bit too rough for you. And you might have to use some different tools as well if the smooth tool isn't enough uh, to get it really nice. But just for this quick example, I think this is going to be enough uh, soon already. Just be careful with the smooth tool as if you go over edges like this one down here, it's also going to uh, smooth over the edges and kind of mess it up. So let's undo this with Control Z. And, well, I think you can, of course, spend lots of time uh, perfecting that. And if you're actually going to use the model, I would recommend also using some of the other, like, 
tools to uh, increase and decrease the height and all of that stuff. But for just a quick example, this is good enough. And let's say this is our model finished up like we want to print it. And once you set it up in the menu, you can just click down here on print and it's automatically gonna send it to your slices software. I set it up for slice slick 3 r Prusa edition and this is gonna automatically start up my slices software and it opened up on a different screen, but when I drag it over here and it already imported the model in here. And as you can see, this is how it looks and I could now use all my settings and slice it and print it. You can see that there are some ugly spots still here uh, on the area where we joined the two parts, but using some more time, you could easily smooth those over and make it look all nice like this was designed this way. So I hope this video brought you MeshMix a little bit closer and gave you kind of an idea of what you can do with the program and how to get started with it. And if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, it's all linked down below. Also my affiliate links where you can support me for free without costing you anything. Link down below. So make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And I'm going to see you in the next one.